Hey, this is Kim, and you know I got soul. All right, you know I got soul.com here with Kim. Uh, we're here wrapping up the second leg of your Promise to Love tour uh, here in New York City tonight. Looking back at all you've done on this tour so far, how much of a success would you say it's been? Um, it's always a success when you're able to uh, connect, when I'm able to connect with my fans, you know. Uh, um, you know, in this day and age of, uh, of uh, you know, record sales being what they are um, overall, you know, downloads being what they are overall, you know, the, the, the venue is the place where we, uh, where we connect most directly with, with our consumers. So, I mean, it's always successful when you, when you make your fans happy. Yeah. And unfortunately, Tamar had to go out. She was opening for yeah. you. But you replaced her with three amazing R&B towns for these last few dates. Yeah. Uh, Avant, Jasmine Sullivan, and Marsha Ambrosius. What made you pick those three? Um, we were looking for uh, people who, 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 we were looking for other artists that people dig, you know. Um, uh, in D.C., Marsha Ambrosius has a uh, has a, a, a pretty loyal following. Uh, Jasmine Sullivan's going to be here on the on the new on the New York show. Uh, Avant, um, you know, is my my my, my partner and, and, and my brother in R and B right now, you know, and uh, um, just really great artists uh, that are solid performers and. Uh, and, and extremely talented. I'm grateful to be to be out on the road with them, and uh, and and our thoughts and prayers are, of course, with uh, Tamar and her family. Yeah. And you've been out on the road so much since your album came out. You know, yeah. two legs of your own tour. You were with Charlie Wilson on his yeah. tour. Um, do you prefer being out on the road, or do you, do you prefer the creative process? Which one do you enjoy more? Both. You know, I like being when I'm on the road. I like being on the road, and and when I'm at home, I like being at home. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm in the studio, you know, I embrace that. You know, whatever, whatever. You know, I try to try to stay uh, stay in the moment and uh, and 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 work on what needs to be worked on at the moment. You know, um, so you know, I enjoy it. I like being out on the road. Yeah, I, I think it's important to highlight not only have you stayed busy, but you've had the opportunities to be on these these nationwide tours and yeah. do these shows. A lot of army artists aren't getting the opportunity, but I think that speaks to who you are as an artist and where you're at and all the success yeah. you've had. So, congrats on that. What does Thank it mean you. to you to be in the position to, to be doing such big things with touring? Um, I think it really speaks to um, it speaks to uh, the necessity to be able to perform. You know, the necessity to invest in your uh, invest in live performance as well as uh, you know what we do in the studio and uh, and working with you know and, and and being blessed and privileged to work with people like Charlie. You know who who you know can give you. Uh, uh, you know, tricks to the trade, you know, and, um, um, you know, that's the, you know, he and, uh, you know, and acts like, uh, the Isley brothers and, and, uh, Frankie Beverly and Mays, you know, they, they create this, they've created a, a template really, you know, for, for longevity, not only, uh, you know, musically or on the radio, but, uh, but, um, performance wise, you know, these guys are performing, you know, into their sixties and seventies, you know, and, um, um, you know, and there's a trick to that, you know, it's good music and also being able to uh, engage the audience. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're, we're doing OK in that arena. Yeah. I think another thing to point out is you've made music that connects with your audiences on every album. But you've been constantly working on your live show craft and developing your live show, which I think keeps you in demand. Mm -hmm. Talk about the work that goes into your live show behind the scenes. Um, you know, we, we, we rehearse. I rehearse with the band uh, on a regular basis. Uh, you know, we try to um, try to rehearse before we before we go out, uh, whether the set list has changed or not. You know, it's uh, it's really important to to try to touch it on a regular basis and and continue to uh, to listen and and to um, uh, you know pay attention to what's going on on stage, what's what's connecting with the audience, and what is just you know what is just okay and 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 what is just missing all together. You know, and and go and continue to refine you know, uh, and get better and better. Um, I think that's important. Uh, it's important not to take it, uh, not to take it for granted. So following this tour, do you see yourself taking a break at all? Or are you going to get back to making new music? What's in the plans? Um, you know, now is, uh, it's writing season. Uh, it's time to start cultivating and, uh, and crafting songs for the, for the next project. So that's where my head will be probably for the next, you know, 12, 18 months. Yeah. And, the previous album, Promise to Love, another number one on Billboard. Looking back at that body of work, came out in 2014, you know, how do you view it? It's incredible that I have a body of work. 
you listen right look back and and you know you know four albums you know i mean it's been you know it's been 12 13 years you know since the first album came out so it's really you know it's you know I, you know i haven't had a real job in a long time you know so i'm i'm very grateful for that yeah i think it's amazing that you remain so humble you know you you, you had a goal three. This is humility you see three. right now. Is that what's happening? <laughs> no, I, I think that's what, what always impresses us about yeah. you as an artist. Your first three albums were all certified, you know, two gold, one platinum, and, and this one did well also. Album sales aren't really, they are, but it still did well. So yeah. how do you remain so so humble and so grounded, even with all the success you've had? Um, you know, you don't take it for granted, man. It's really, you know, really just trying to keep getting better, you know, and doing more. You know, I just... You know, I can't, I, you can't, you can't, you, you don't, you don't arrive, right. you know, uh, once you arrive, then, you know, then one, then there's no place else to go, right. you know, um, so it's really about, you know, and realizing that's not me, you know, I mean, it's really, you know, the people that I work with and, 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 um, you know, we look at what we do really as, you know, a, a ministry of sorts, you know, so, um, you know, I'm trying to be of service, you know, with this music and, uh, uh, serve a power greater than myself and serve and also serve um, you know R&B you know uh, and uh, that's really important to all of us so um, you know we don't take don't take it for granted yeah there are, there are too many people out there who are trying to do what we're doing and who can't get on who are you know far more talented better songwriters better dancers can out sing out dance out produce you know and you'll never know their names you know so it's really important to you know to not to not take that for granted absolutely yeah Another impressive thing, I think, is that how you're able to connect with your fans so well. It's like every time one of your albums comes out or one of your singles, you know the, song, the single is going to do well because it hits people in the right way. Yeah. It starts, you know, taking off at radio. You know it's going to go top ten, top five at radio. But how, do you, how are you able to connect with your fans so well when you release this material and when you put out these songs? I think, you know, we, you know the songs that go to radio, are they, you know, those are, they're, they're crafted to go to radio. Okay. You know, it's kind of you create... You know, we create a body of work for every album, and off of that album, you know, there are specific songs that that are marked, you know, to go to radio. And I think, you know, some of the, uh, you know, you know, we give away the secret sauce, man. The hook is everything. You know, you have to have lyrics that that uh, that people can identify, not only identify with, but that they can sing to. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it can't be complicated. You know, and. Uh, and 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 pay attention to the to the melody, um, and uh, you know, and it doesn't help to you know, to have a track record of, you know, creating music that that people want to hear. So it kind of gives you a, you know, like you get a you get a pass if it's not good. <laughs> we'll give you a pass. We'll let that one go, you know. Um, so it, you know, we've been again been very 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 fortunate. Tremendous ride so far. I mean, I think I think a lot of R and B artists are struggling with this commercial viability, trying to mm. to do something that's tailor made for radio. Which you said you you keep in mind. Is that something you you focus on when you're in there, you know, writing and recording the next project? Do you think about I need a radio song, or does it come naturally to you? Um, I think you know a great song is a great song. You know, a good song is a good song, man. And uh, um, you know, I I don't think that there's a uh, I don't know that I've experimented with different things. I've tried to. I've done some different things, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I serve the, I serve the song. You know, at the end of the day, I, end, I still end up sounding like me. So, and when I hear my song come on behind uh, something else on the radio, it doesn't sound like anything else on the radio. Right. And and not that's not that's not out of ego. It used to bother me. It was like, dude, how come my music doesn't sound like that? You know what I mean? Well, it's not it's not supposed to. Right. You know, and uh, it 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 stands out. You know, uh, there's not a lot of gimmickry to it. You know, right. it's just a, you know, it's just a guy, you know, singing a song with his band behind him. Right. You know, we try to keep it as close to that as possible. And then, just last question: you, you you've dominated this urban AC genre, and we, you know, we come across a lot of R&B artists who are kind of scared to go in, in, into that um, genre. They they want to stay younger and cooler, right. but it's like you've you've really taken it, taken a hold of it, and just stuck to you know it's you, and you've done really well there. Why do you think it is that some artists are afraid? I mean, I feel like Urban AC is where some of the best R&B is being made. It's like some artists just don't want to go there. Right. I think, you know, because we, uh, the, the the market in general, you know, whether it's selling records or, you know, selling clothes or selling, you know, everybody's trying to hit that, you know, whatever that demographic is, that 18 to 25-year-old demographic with the, with the discretionary 
you know, income and, 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 you know, and there's value in that when you're, when, when that's where you are, you know what I mean? But I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't come on being, you know, hitting that demographic. I came on to the scene as a, as, uh, as, as an urban adult contemporary artist. And, um, um, so I didn't have to, I didn't have to make that transition from having, you know, teenagers following me at one stage of my career and hoping that they carry over to, you know, to, uh, to, to adulthood, you know what I mean? It's like I started there and my people are there and we just, you know, and we're just, we're just growing together. And I think that, that, uh, you know, people are afraid of that because, you know, because you're leaving, you're leaving the main, you know, they look at it as leaving the mainstream, you know, but in, in reality, if you're going to have longevity, you're going to have to learn how to play in this. You're going to have to learn how to play this. Everybody's going to be an adult at some point. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, it doesn't mean that your musical tastes have to change, but you're definitely, you know, you can't, you know, you look you look silly. You, well, I, I was going to say you look silly doing certain dances, but Charlie Wilson is doing everybody's. Charlie Wilson is dancing like, you know, Chris Brown, you know. But, I mean, you know, it's, you know, you had you know, we have to embrace being being grown folks or not. You know what I mean? I mean, how do you look trying to appeal to teenagers when you're, you know, 38, 40, you know, 50 years old? If that's not your, if that's not your thing, you know what I mean? Um, so, um, you know, we've done well where we are, and uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to do more of the same. Love it. Thank you. Not mad at the 18 to 25 year olds. I'm just saying. You know, I got a lot of young fans. I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying. You know, um, it's important to, you know, for grown people to be grown. Great answer. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, man, I'm good. Thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, Music by Kim, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Periscope, whatever you're doing, that's where we are. Music by Kim. God bless you.